Imogen Clark, and you're watching Live on the Lot on Skippy TV. This is my song, Collide. There's a train coming, honey. Better run for your life. Fire's hot as hell, but it won't keep you warm at night. Looking over shoulders never kept you walking straight. Oh, but my, oh, my, what a pretty life we've come to create. Cause I got blues in my pocket. I got you on my mind. My two cents if you want it. Living don't make you lie. But it's stolen I got trust in the moonlight And I may be somewhat misguided To let your heart and mind collide A little bit of nothing Sure can do a lot It starts out with a wink But baby, it ends with a scar The higher that you build it the further it falls down Oh, but we all see what we want to see On the dark side of town Cause I got blues in my pocket I got you on my mind My two cents if you want it Living don't make you alive And I got faith, but it's stolen I got trust in the moonlight And I may be somewhat misguided To let your heart it ain't always pretty it's more often a mess Friday night in the city might just get you off my chest logic never falters but trouble never tells and so you and I are on the borderline between heaven and hell cause I got blues in my pocket I got you on my mind my two cents if you want it living don't make you alive and I got faith but it's stolen I got trust in the moonlight and I may be somewhat misguided to let your heart and mind collide I got blues in my pocket I got you on my mind my two cents if you want it well living don't make you alive and I got faith but it's stolen I got trust in the moonlight And I may be somewhat misguided To let your heart and mind collide Collide Hey, I'm Imogen Clark, and you're watching Live on the Lot on Skippy TV. This is my song, You're Anything at All. The we're in this bar sing hallelujah. Well, if I want a drink, then what's it to you? As I recall, I was never yours, and you were never mine anyway. They're all dancing to the things I felt now And I'm up here wishing I could still feel them somehow Our ships collided in the night And we went down in beautiful flames But who am I to be your lover? Who am I to be the writing on the wall? Who am I to tell your stories? Who am The only love I know 
Now's a short fused firework And ain't it a pretty view The tip of the iceberg You thought I'd break your heart Well you beat me to it Honey, take a bow But who am I to be your lover? Who am I to be the writing on the wall? Who am I to tell your stories? Who am So you can't cross my mind Love's a gamble where the only one who loses Is the one who never tries Oh, the one who never tries But who am I to be your lover? Who am I to be the writing on the wall? Who am I to tell your stories? Who am Dyer, you're watching Live on the Lot on Skippy TV and I'm here today with the gorgeous singer-songstress Imogen Clark. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming in. Oh, it is my pleasure. No, pleasure's mine. Oh. <laughs> get, let's, let's get into this. <laughs> so let's start from, um, I guess, the obvious place, the beginning. Um, how did you get started in music? Do you think it was something you learned or was it born in you? Well, I think it was a little bit of both really because my dad's been a musician all his life and I think um, it was probably somewhat a mixture of his genes and, you know, the musical side of um, my family is on my dad's side, all my cousins, you know, my uncle and, and my brother and everybody. Um, but also, you know, because he was a musician, he had musical instruments lying around. So, mm. you know, I he just let me pick them up, which is very nice of him considering I was very young and could probably have broken these expensive <laughs> instruments. But he let me, you know, handle them and let me work with them so so it was really a bit of a mixture, really, yeah. So Christmas time with the family is quite musical then? Yes. Yeah. It's always like blues jams in the lounge room with that like multiple cool. different instruments and, you know, we've got like a little cajon and someone plays a cajon and, yeah, it's always good fun. It's very yeah. good fun. That sounds like fun. I mean, I grew up in a family that wasn't musical at all. So yeah. it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, like, you know, sort of just on my own learning music. So it's funny cool. how it's either one or the other. I mm. seem to have musicians either come from absolutely no musical background or like a supremely musical background. It's yeah. never really in the middle, is it? I think so. So um, I had Love and Lovely Lies, your album, your last album. Yes. You've got a new one coming out. Yes. I had that in my car, honestly, for about eight months oh, straight. Thank just you. Just like listening to it over and over. I That's came to the awesome. launch and I was just totally captured in your songs and I think a lot of people are. Your writing is very, very mature for someone your age. I, I'm sure you get that a lot. Thank you. No, that's very sweet. I really, really appreciate that because I guess that's what you want to do is um, be able to um, express what you've learned so far in your life. Even, mm. if you, even if you are young, you know, you want to be able to um, share with people just your experiences and your observations of life so far. Mm. And do you sort of think in the way that you write your songs, do you, do you try and make them more sort of poetic or is that literally how your mind works? It's very, I don't know. Like... <laughs> I actually don't know. That's a really good question. I mean, I think I, I, um, I try in a certain way to make them poetic because all of my idols write like that, I suppose. Mm. I mean, I love Joni Mitchell and I mm. love Stevie Nicks and I love, um, you know, uh, even, you know, more more contemporary artists like Neil Finn and Paul Kelly and, you know, Australian artists mm. and Ryan Adams, Bruce Springsteen. I mean, they all write in this way that kind of... Um, it's not super literal. It's more like it's got a lot of metaphorical stuff going yeah. on and it's very, um, you know, a lot of great imagery. And that, so because mm. I idolise those people, maybe that's why I sort of um, think in that way. And I've also 
never been good at like coming right out and saying something really obvious. Like okay. I always like to shroud it in mystery, <laughs> just in you know, just to give people a bit of you know what's yeah. it about. <laughs> yeah, well, they can make up their own minds about what they sort of how they interpret it. I guess yeah, that's what I like. People yeah. making up their own minds. Yeah. yeah. Well, it took me eight months in the car to work out my interpretations of the songs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Which is great. I'm so glad you had a new car for that long. That's yeah. the ultimate compliment. Thank you. Oh, no worries. And speaking of your idols, I mean, we had this moment at the APRA Awards last week yes. um, where sometimes you find yourself standing in the presence of someone like Paul Kelly. <gasps> And, um, you know, it was a pretty special <laughs> moment and, and seeing these people and being surrounded by these people now um, all the time, I yes. guess, how does it feel to be in the thick of the industry at the moment? It's pretty surreal. I mean, I, I don't think if I'd told myself, uh, you know, even a, even a couple of years ago, let alone maybe 10 years ago when I first started music, um, that I would be mixing with people like that and working mm. with people like that, I don't think I would ever have believed it really because um, it's happened, I mean I didn't know if it would ever happen, especially not this quickly by this young an age, so I feel so privileged to get to work with, you know, people like Diesel and, you know, have, mm. have him on my team and in my corner and, you know, these people that for a long time just seemed very far away, you know, idols and inspirations to me, not people that I would actually be working with personally, so yeah. it's, it's wonderful. It's amazing. And you worked with Diesel, obviously, on the album Collide that's coming out. Been writing so, so much since the last record and mm. it's all just feels like it's been, you know, tumbling out and we had so many songs to choose from uh, for this album. So I feel like we've really handpicked them carefully and mm -hmm. I'm really proud of the songs on it. So proud of the production and, and I absolutely adore, you know, Diesel and everything he's done for this project. You know, he's done an amazing job. I couldn't have asked for a better producer and, yeah. you know, he played a lot of instruments on the album too. So... I just can't wait to put it out in the world and have people hear it, you know? I know, I can't wait to hear it. Thank well, the you. first two singles are out, so Collide was the first one. That's yes. actually the title of the album as yes. well. So does that sort of sum up, I guess, the, the meaning, the message? Yeah. What, what does that mean? I mean, to me, Collide was what I decided to call the album because um, that... You know, that word to me had a lot of connotations that related to, you know, um, clashes of um, ideas and, you know, the clash between sort of being young and growing up and young adulthood and, and that sort of the joys and the challenges of entering adulthood, which mm -hmm. is really what the whole album is about. You know, it's about the great new freedoms that you get from, you know, that experience, but also, you know, learning things about yourself and about other people that may not be, um, you know, may not reflect the sort of naivety that you had when you were young younger and mm. you, you sort of realise that you can't trust everybody all the time and these yeah. sort of conflicting emotions and that's where the word collide sort of came into it and I thought this would be the perfect um, name for the record to just mm. sum all that up. Yeah, I mean, and um, I imagine that you've sort of fast-tracked your, I guess, learning from, from life experiences because you've experienced so much as a young person in the last couple of years, especially um, since the album and you've done a lot of touring on the road and you've, you've probably come across um, a lot of situations that you have had to learn yeah, from. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I feel like music, and you would, I, mm. I imagine, find this as well, music really makes you grow up quickly. I mean, it it's, does. Especially when you start music at a young age, as you and I both have, it's very, um, you're forced to sort of grow up quickly because you're in an industry of people that um, it's, it doesn't matter your age, you're, you're judged by the same, um, you know, the same standards. So, you mm. know, you, you can't be um, making excuses based on your age. You know, you just have to be as good as you can be. Mm. And sometimes you're competing against people who, not competing, but sometimes you're in the same world as people yeah, who, are, right. who are twice your age and, and you want to be, you know, holding your own despite mm. your youth. So, you know, that, that's, um, that's something that, you know, it has made me grow up quickly and I'm, mm. I'm happy that I started so young for that yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah, and you can definitely hold your own, obviously. You've been Thank working you. with people like um, Shane Nicholson, Casey Chambers. Yes. You actually wrote a couple of songs with Casey. One of them was a Golden Guitar nominated song this year. Yes. That's right? Yes, that's right. Tell yes. me about writing with Casey. That's, that's awesome. Pretty fun. I yeah. really like Casey and uh, we've, ha we've you know, gotten the chance to write together a few times now and, and two of the songs uh, on her recent album, Dragonfly, were I got to co-write. and That's incredible. Um, I, thank that's, you. Yeah. I really, wow. really enjoyed the process and, you know, what we actually didn't sit down and go let's write a song for my next album it was very much um 
you know, we were just hanging out and it mm -hmm. was, um, you know, co-written with um, Brandon Dodd and Harry Hookie and we were all just hanging out one night at Casey's house and we just decided to have a write and I never thought it would, those songs would end up anywhere and so I was really, really glad that they ended up on the record, especially one of them being a duet with Paul Kelly, yeah, as you mentioned my earlier, gosh. one of my absolute mm. idols. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's a real dream come true when stuff like that happens and, you know, that, that respect um, for your songwriting is always a wonderful thing to earn. So. Oh, of course. And do you think that you would have recorded the songs yourself if Casey didn't you snatch them yeah. away? <laughs> you know what? I totally, like, I love the, both of the songs and I yeah. absolutely would have, but I feel like they've got that flavour about them that was totally hers and it was just like it just fit for her yeah. and for her, for that record and it was just yeah it was wonderful so seeing the success of that album you know going number one and all the, uh, winning arias and stuff it's like it's proud to feel like you had a small part of it you know mm. it's great and that's incredible because you know you're unmanaged you're you have your own publishing yes um you're with obviously universal music lost highway which yes. is incredible thank you signed your record deal a couple of years ago yes that's Before right. your first album? Yes, that's right. So actually on the strength of that first record was, was kind of what um, helped me get that record deal. So yeah. I never thought that, once again, something else that, you know, I had very low expectations for. Of course, I was very excited about the first record, Love and Lovely Lies, but I had no idea that that was going to be something that helped me become signed to a major label because... Mm. Essentially, it was made in a garage, you know, down mm. at the Hookie House in Gippsland. And, and, you know, it was very, very grassroots level. And it, I, we just poured our hearts and souls into it and didn't mm. think much was going to happen. And then, you know, that came and along. And look so, what happened. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and that was really the starting point of a lot of snowballing of, um, you know, achieving some goals that I'm so proud of. And, mm. you know, so I'm really, really happy with what that record's achieved and now excited to sort of be getting into the new era with Collide. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so the second single is out. It's yes. called You're Anything At All. Yes. Um, I've watched the clip. It's very sweet. Thank it's got you. got a special someone in there. <laughs> yes, that's right. We did rope my partner into being the love interest <laughs> and he didn't have much choice. I said, it's either I spend the whole day making out with some random actor or making out with you. So What's I mean, gonna pick? <laughs> you've got to choose wisely. <laughs> Look, I'm sure he was very happy to play that part. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hopefully. really have to act, did he? So. That's right. Yeah. But he did very well for, for a, oh, a, yeah. a totally like someone who's never acted before. I thought he yeah, he could have fooled me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my yeah. gosh. And Jeremy <laughs> Dillon obviously directed, um, produced that one as well. Yes. As well as your last, I think, three. Yes, that three. Have all hit number yeah. one on CMC. Yes, I'm ah. very proud of that. That's like a, a pretty ridiculous thing to say out loud. Actually, I don't really believe it, but Jeremy is incredible. As you yeah. know, having worked with him before, um, he is just an absolutely amazing person. And once again, at such a young age, so um, very competent and mm. his ideas just blow me away. And, you know, I'm not the sort of person who just um, will just completely hand over control to someone else. Like normally I'm very much a control you freak like and you can I Jeremy worry, though, but right? I feel like I He's can. He's got this creative eye that does. Just yes. Different outside the box. Exactly. To and he always comes up with these great ideas. He'll always just sort of go, you know, I have this idea for this clip and it will be so unorthodox and I just know it's going to work and I just I know putting my trust in him that he will always do an excellent job and he does he's never let me down he's so you know hopefully here's to many more clips together oh yes. my gosh I'm sure yeah you'll have plenty of singles coming off yes. this album thank you I'm so excited to hear it congrats on all your success thank you so much Mel. and thanks for coming in to thank have a you chat. thank you for having me I appreciate it Imogen Clark you're watching live on the lot I'm Melanie Dyer and we'll see you next time